my way into Carlingford, it soon became apparent that there was some bizarre local ritual going on in one of the river culverts. I had no idea what it was about, and I never did find out. But the best clue was the canoes on the foreshore. I guess it had something to do with the local canoe club, but who knows. Obviously King John moved around a bit because they built the castle in um, Dublin round about the same sort of time. If you're Canadian, you might have heard of this fella. He apparently helped find Canada. And in case you're in Quebec watching this, here's the French version. Well, it's a fairly typical small town on the side of the uh, loch. It does have some absolutely lovely little streets. Meanwhile, back at the boat, we were busy having close encounters. Look at this we found on the boat. Co uh -huh. Coffee mountain or... <whistles> or however you do it. <laughs> We left Carlingford the next day and we charged down the lock to catch the ebb of the tide in the last hour to carry us out to sea. Because of the tides in our glass being so low, we had to get in there long before low tide, otherwise we'd be stuck outside for some hours. This meant we had a schedule to keep. Where the ebb running out of Carlyford meets the Irish Sea can get very, very rough in around Grenora Point, and it was quite swelly, and we even had white caps that day. It was pretty swelly, wasn't it, Bev? next door to us lost its um, dinghy, its davits. I wonder if the other bits about his dinghy's wrecked the old repair. Yeah, so. All because he came in against the M. Yeah. Um, having come out on the M, I think he's sort of uh, open to the explanation. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm hoping now that we're out the wider bay, things calm down, and we have an easy passage to our kids. Hey! Mark, sway removed. 
Well we've just arrived in Ardglass Harbour and this is the end of the pier or the pontoon and oh yeah there's the outer wall there's the <laughs> there's the rocks you've got to avoid over there and there's loads of them absolutely loads quaint little harbour all right but oh my god when we came in the guy who was helping us in gave us a top tip and uh, basically what he says is as a top tip is to uh, fill put the load here at the bottom of your stanchion and then come up to your wire um, and the reason he says that is um, it puts less uh, load on your lifelines and your stanchions so that's his top tip I can see what he means because that is really so firm and secure but also it's not going to wreck your lines or give way and things like that so that's his top tip we made it and i am looking forward to this steak and chips victory dinner yep victory all right <laughs> that was a really tricky entrance you did fantastic there as always and so did you well, I have a tendency to do with the big open sea bed. That <laughs> doesn't happen to do anything up there. Yeah, there's the ramp up to the marina. No, I can see several white caps, Bev, and you can see all the fishing boats behind it, and just off to the side. You can see a little bit of white caps. We'll see a bit more of that in a minute. But just look at that tiny little um, tower. tower. Tiniest tower I've seen, to be honest. And they've got plate. They've just got enough room for the sand. So they must have come into that and gone out onto that tiny sandy beach. I guess when you live this close to the uh, sea, you don't worry too much about a car, you have a rib in your driveway. <laughs> Lots of 